All right, Waste of World of Sports, ahoy. We will jump the gun a little bit early there because the teams are running out onto the field. Obviously, we've got all sorts of shenanigans to get through first with the national anthems and whatnot, but still, let's just jump in a little bit early because we don't want to miss any of this. Connor Crowley, ahoy there, mate. To answer your question, is Ben Healy on the bench for Scotland? I can confirm that he is indeed as I glance over at the team sheets here. Over to the left-hand side screen of myself in the number 22, Ben Healy. J. Joe already into the drinks. I love it. I like to see it. So, yes, welcome along, everybody. Wasted world of sports. Continued coverage of the Six Nations. Almost didn't make this one, to be perfectly honest. Very difficult it is. The, the time zone difference. This is the problem. The time zone. Here in Australia, it's very, very early in the morning. It's just hit the stroke of midnight. And of course, covering games that it's prime time for the lucky folk in Europe. But anyways, not to worry. I'll also be doing the next match, yes. Connor Crowley, James, ahoy mate. Staying up late for this one. I'm not, uh, I'm not possibly converting you, am I? I could be getting my Jameses mixed up, but... I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. I got my Jameses mixed up because I thought you really, really disliked the WWE. Maybe I've got you mixed up thinking you dislike Rugby Union as well. It's what happens when you're a raging alco. Forget a lot of stuff. <laughs> I know that now, James. Yes, we've we've reestablished that now. I mistook a comment on, on one of the videos. Must have been another James, or or it was Vopsy. Oh God! <laughs> How dare you get us confused? Is what James is thinking right now. Okay, so let's quickly. Run through some tips for this game. If I switch the ladder off for a second, we'll head on over to my tips. This is what I think is going to happen in this game. I think Scotland get the first points. Yeah, you know what else? Something that a few more people know. Kane was the fake diesel as well. Back in the fake diesel and Razor Ramon days. So I think Scotland will... Score the first points through a penalty. Ultimately, I've got France winning this game. France to score the first try. Damien Pinot, that's my man. He'll, he'll score a try at some point, but I, I have a feeling he'll score the first try for France. I think it's going to be close, Connor. Scotland are no schlubs. It's going to be very close, I think, for about 60 minutes. And then France will cover the line ultimately in the end. I think they win by about 10 points. So there you go. There are, there are my predictions. Now I am backing these predictions. I put my money where my mouth is. I put the proverbials on the chopping block, as we all know. Oh, God, what a lot of fluff. They're not just doing... They're not just doing national anthems, which is fine. I'm not complaining about the national anthems. But uh, they're also doing handshakes, meet and greet with somebody. It might very well be a big deal. I just happen to have no idea who this person is that all the players are being introduced to. And I need to turn my volume up. I can't hear anything. I might know who it is. They'll be able to tell me who it is. Yeah, I'm with you there, James. Close. Really close. But then France to run away. Well, not run away with it. But a couple of late tries, maybe. In that last 15, 20 minutes, France. To ultimately come out on top. What it's going to come down to for Scotland. What, what it's going to come down to for Scotland. Obviously, they played a game of two halves last week. If we skip back to the ladder switch my tips off for a second and put the ladder back on we can see Ireland out there on their own 
Top of the table, well deserved. For Scotland, it was a game of two halves. They nearly threw it away. They had an immaculate first half. And then Wales very nearly created history and ran them down at the end. Very, very nearly. So they're going to have to be switched on for both halves. They can't play a game of two halves because this will be a very different French team this week. They were embarrassed. Embarrassment is starting to become a frequent thing for this team and they won't want it anymore. They'll be expected to win this one. Raging hot favorites with the bookmakers. That's the princess of Scotland that I'm insulting. Okay, there you go. Not that I insulted her. I don't think I said anything mean. I just said I didn't know who it was. And there's absolutely no reason why I should know who it was. Is. <laughs> was. <laughs> oh, dear. It's not getting any better. 53% on the poll think that Scotland are going to claim this one. France. Underdogs with the people. Raging hot favourites with the bookmakers, though. Obviously, this is a home game for Scotland. Look at all those, what would you call it? Blue, I guess. But what shade of blue is more? Because both teams are a shade of blue. Actually, who's going to be wearing a reverse strip tonight? It would have to be France, I dare say. Scotland with the home game. France would be wearing the reverse strip. But yes, 53% leaning towards Scotland. Now, look, I have tipped... France, but trust me, there is absolutely no, there's no, uh, what's the word? There's no passion there for me in that prediction. I'm more than happy to witness an upset. Oh, Streamlabs, or yet to be named bot. I forgot to switch off the NRL tipping comp because this is obviously not the NRL or anything related to it. Give me a second, I'll sort that out. We can't be having that all night. Bring back Chuggy is what we'll be screaming if we have that all night. For those of you new to the Wasted World of Sports, welcome along, very nice to have you here. Our first ever coverage of the Six Nations. I've been enjoying every single game thus far. Spilly Dilly, that's the word. That's the name. I'm going to have to try and remember that. That's the winner at the moment. That is definitely the front runner for now, James. Much like you would be the front runner, I dare say, in the brand new Wasted World of Sports VIP leaderboard. I haven't checked yet, but I'm just gathering. So there are my tips. My same game, multi. France to win, covering the line. Pinot and Vandermeer. Vandermeer for Scotland. Pinot for France. The try scorers. All right, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, I was going to switch off the NRL tipping timer that the bot is sharing. There we go. All right. Because we can't have that. Uh, yes, I can confirm, James, that you are ahead. Closely followed by Mr. Ed's Dead, Iron Mike, and UFC OnlyFans. I just had a cheeky little look. Oh, yes, let's go. It is game time. Scotland versus France. Let's hope for another absolute humdinger of a contest. That's a word that I've never used on the streams before, I'm sure. A cracker. That's what I usually say. Triple H did indeed say that Roman and Rhodes is a go-ahead for WrestleMania. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they do with that. Maybe they are leaning towards a, a two-nighter. 
a double main event for Roman Reigns. I still can't understand why they came this far with Roman's title reign, this close to Hulk Hogan's record, months away to just not carry through with it. But if it's Roman versus Cody in the main event, Cody can't lose again. He just can't. I mean, that'd be the end of him. But anyway, I digress. We've got more important things to worry about right now, and that is Scotland versus France. The Six Nations, one of these teams will no longer be undefeated. Somebody will be on the receiving end of a loss. Unless, of course, it's a draw, in which case they're both losers. That's just the way it works. So keep an eye on my tips. Keep an eye on how this game plays out close for around about 60 minutes. <clears throat> Finn Russell to get us underway. All right. This has been really exciting. As I said, this is the first time that I've ever covered the Six Nations and I've been enjoying every single game so far. Southern Hemisphere boy, I'm used to the Super Rugby. I'm used to the, the Rugby Championship, but we are underway. Match number four, it would be, in the Six Nations Championship for 2024. France secured at the back from the kickoff. And we set up a box kick. It's a nice one up towards halfway. Staying in the field of play and pressure on the fullback. And it's Patterson who takes it down at the back for Scotland. They will have the ball on halfway. Looking good here for my early tip of a uh, penalty goal. First points for Scotland. France try and get in there and counter ruck. Cheeky little box kick over the top, and this will be marked, surely. Yes, it is marked at the back. France. Jalibert is back there. What was he doing over on the wing? Good positioning, I suppose. Failing to find touch. Not entirely sure if he was aiming for the touchline, though. A good 52 meters on the kick, nonetheless. And he is back there. The foursome backs. Shelly Bear would win this one, surely. And that is a great clearance. Right up over the halfway line and forcing Scotland back down into their own territory. Dan Fisher, ahoy there, mate. Dan Fisher would be uh, the Dan Jam, I believe. Scotland with their first line out throw. Hit the target of the front and a clearing kick from Russell. Letting it bounce, that's always risky business. But um, another good return kick from France. They are winning the kicking duel, hands down. Some good boots there in the French lineup. Scotland might want to rethink that one. In terms of getting into a kicking jaw, that is. A successful line out last time for Scotland. Going to the front this time. A decoy to the middle. Swooping back around to the front. There's decoys everywhere into this line out. Everybody was confused. But they find, especially me. But they find their target in the middle. And now a rolling maul. Going nowhere. Well defended from France. And then a cheeky hand in the side. Oh, you're not allowed to play the scrum half's hand. Maybe he gets away with it because it was from a mall. That's probably the case, actually. Maybe you are allowed to attack the hand from a mall. In which case, fantastic play from France. And they're right on top here early. Connor Crowley says Ben Helly is an ex Munster player. That is something I will endeavour to do more of as France are now pinged for holding on. Great work at the breakdown from the flanker, Rory Darge. 
By the time I turned back to the screen, he was off his feet. But clearly, the referee thought he had done enough on the feet to win that turnover perfectly legally. Great work there from Scotland. So yes, as I was saying, the, the, the club rugby, the European club rugby, could be something I endeavor to do more of. Look at that, the big fella, the big number three, Uini Antonio. I probably said his name wrong. First name, anyway. The big number three there, slapping the scrum half's arm. Perfectly legally, because it was a maul. And there you go. Scotland have been secure in their lineouts so far, and it's three from three. Set piece play. They spread it wide, and they've got numbers, but they spill the beans. Enterprising early play, looking very promising there from Scotland. Luku from scrum half plugs it upfield, and again, France win the kicking duel, a 54-meter kick upfield. Uh, now, James has asked me uh, a question here. Six Nations is much faster rugby, don't you think, Dan? Asks James. Uh, it does feel that way. It does feel that way. I feel like with the with the uh, Super Rugby and the Rugby Championship, a lot of fluffing about, isn't there? We have seen so much action, even with the, the kicking jewels, which are often frowned upon, but we have seen so much action in this first five minutes. The players are just getting on with the business, aren't they? I like it. And just as I say, the players are getting on with it and it's been very fast-paced action. We do have our first injury stoppage of the night. Put the mockers on them. Just getting in each other's way there in attacking range, Scotland. Jones and Darge. A little too close side by side there. Drop ball brings that ball, uh, brings that play to a halt. But yes, very fast paced. I'm enjoying the closeness of the games as well. I feel like the teams maybe are a bit more evenly matched. Traditionally, that that's probably fair to say. In the rugby championship, obviously, Australia's crap. South Africa, in fairness to South Africa, a uh, quality team, but they only seem to be really, really super good at World Cup time. But they are the closest threat to the All Blacks as far as Southern Hemisphere rugby goes. Yeah, I just I feel like from what I've seen from the Six Nations so far, every game has been really close. Another box kick here up over halfway, and it's secured by France at the back. Lots of box kicking, but that's never bothered me. It's part of the game of chess, the game of human chess that is rugby. It's what puts a lot of people off, but the art of a good kick, it's an art form. The art of a good kick is an art form. <laughs> that works. <laughs> it might be very simplistic in its delivery as far as the English language goes, but it works. After a couple of box kicks back and forth, Scotland do secure at the back of the ruck. Set up another one. This one's getting dangerous close to the sideline. Jelly Bear drops it forward. And Scotland now have front foot ball. Numbers out to the right. Some slow defenders, lazy defenders, making their way back to the defensive line. Wraparound play. And now some space out wide to the right. Support in field. And this will be a try for Scotland, surely. Yes! Ben White, is it Ben White, the scrum half, sliding across the line? Well, that's just gone and knackered all of my pre-match predictions in one fell swoop.
Scotland, much like the first half last week, they've come to play. The box kick, the error from Jalabert at the back, and just a simple wrap around. Too much space for Patterson. Draw and pass was all that was needed. It was three on two. And the scrum half white slides across the line. Scotland strike first. Well, in fairness, I did say Scotland would get first points. I've got to defend myself here. If we go back to my pre-match tips, I did say Scotland would get... Scotland would get first points. I did say that. I did also very specifically say it would be via a penalty, but I did... Okay, I'm clutching at straws. I'm trying to save myself. I'm desperately trying to save myself from that scenario. As the conversion from Finn Russell is successful. Oh, he's excited, old mate. Old mate on the sideline there, very excited. With a very impressive beard, no less. Seven points to nil. Scotland, they're up in the coach's box. And once again, James, this is what you were referring to here. Much faster rugby. There it goes. No fluffing about. No bollocksing about. The kickoff. Done straight away. As they set up another box kick and clear up over halfway. France. Through Ramos. Returning the ball. Beats the first tackle. Slips through another Ramos. He's into space at the back. And he's brought down 22 out. Quick ruck ball, and they've got a penalty advantage to boot. Don't tell me France are going to get their first points through a penalty goal. And I got my tips all backwards. And now they try a wraparound play of their own, and that creates some space. A couple of little wraparounds, one from either team, and it's created space down the right-hand edge. But Scotland, hold on. Still playing under penalty advantage here, France can spread it wide to the left inside pass though back into traffic Jalibert taken down Pinot runs it to the line and then a cheeky little offload still under penalty advantage this is a huge penalty advantage that the referees played here and now he brings them back that was a long advantage Dan Jem welcome my friend how are you doing today Oh, they're going to take the three here, surely, France. And I did indeed get my uh, get my picks a little backwards. St pointing straight to the post there, the captain. But it's about to be seven points to three. James asks if I saw the Redcliffe Dolphins thrashed the Capras today, 58-6 in their trial match. I, di I didn't, actually. I did see that the Brisbane Broncos... Uh, snatched a win from the Wynnum, Wynnum uh, Seagulls, I want to say. Six Nations Rugby, Dan Jam. I'm sold. I am sold. This is the first time I've ever watched. Last week did not let me down. And this first 10 minutes... Of the opening game of this weekend has not let me down. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to do the Island Italy game. But in fairness, if you were going to pick one game to not watch, that's probably going to be the one, isn't it? In fairness, no disrespect to Italy. They put on a performance to be very, very proud of in week one. But uh, due to work work commitments, and the game is on 1 a.m. on a Monday morning for me. I, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I haven't said completely and uh, absolutely no. It's just going to be very difficult. 1 a.m. on a Monday morning. Seven points to three it is. The, the scoreboard is taking a little bit of time to update, but 7-3 it is. And France have secured the ball from the kickoff and clearing up towards halfway. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, actually, I'm 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 up on all bets. As Scotland firing a cutout pass across the face of the defence, but then the pop pass back inside, off the head. And it's play on. Scotland still have it. It was off the face. I didn't realise you were allowed to pass the ball forward with your face. And this one does... Oh, this one does not spill forward either. It's been raked back by France, but now there's space and a kick forward. Well positioned at the back is Patterson for Scotland. And he returns it with interest up over halfway. Oh, Patterson, that is one fine-looking rugby player, I'm going to say. He has been very, very solid to start this game. And now a cutout pass to the invisible man. The cutout pass to John Cena from Hugh Jones. And John Cena's dropped it over the sideline. <laughs> Dan Jam says, shirking at 1am on a Monday morning. Is your heart really into it? Oh, making me feel bad. <laughs> I've been so dedicated to the cause all 2023 as well. It's a fair point, though. It is a fair point. Like I said, I haven't completely said no. And I know that you're only joking. You're not really meaning to make me feel bad. A straight through a gaping hole goes the French center. And he's dragged down five meters out. Quick ruck ball. He's intercepted by Van der Meer. And now Scotland go up the other end. Oh, this is Helter Skelter. This is rugby. Back and forth. France were going to score for all money. It was a Gael Fickow. Straight through a gap. Runs a great angle. Skittles, two Scottish defenders. Oh, it was Van der Meer. Van de oh, he's not onside, surely. He's offside here, surely, Van der Meer. Oh, I think they've got away with murder there, Scotland. But boy, it looked good. It looked really impressive. It was a very, very... Oh, the French players are blowing up here. They can't believe it. We've all just seen it on the big screen. We have just seen it on the big screen. And now it's the stolen line-out throw, and Scotland. Oh, France are rattled now. Big defense driving Scotland backwards. Just hovering around that halfway line, going through the phases here, Scotland. Oh, France, they were in for all money there. A great cutback angle from Fikau. Or Fiku. I'm not sure which pronunciation is correct. Another box kick. This one is fielded to the back by Ramos. And a penalty for France. Playing the ball on the ground. Just a cheeky little hand in there. Slapping it back. And that's a big let off for the French. Massive let off. Seven points to three. It remains 16 and a half minutes gone. Oh, and France failed a fine touch. It's these simple errors that are just destroying the momentum. Any chance of momentum that France have. But Ramos kicks it up towards halfway, but they should have had a line out. France, it should have been their throw into the line out in attacking range, but instead, Scotland will have the throw on halfway. Oh, you just can't do that. You can't miss touch with a penalty kick. Well, I mean, you can physically, but you shouldn't. 
Unforgivable is what it is as Scotland secure the line out and Russell puts the crossfield kick up. Pressure on the kick chase and it's spilled at the back by Ramos. And this is another net result for Scotland. France are winning the kicking duel as far as distance goes. But Scotland are well and truly on top of the kicking jewels when handling errors come into play. And now the lineout goes over the top into midfield. They don't have a lot of options, though. Scotland, the defense is numbered up. Big run inside the 22 from Schumann. Scotland looking threatening. Mm. Now they've got the penalty advantage. Now they can unleash. No, they can't because the referee's blowed it up. Straight away. Take the three. Take the three. Take the three. Yeah, take the three. I dare say they will have a crack here, Finn Russell. Oh, he's putting it into the corner. They don't want the three points. Scotland have signaled their intent. Into the corner it goes. Bold play. Either that or they think, look what happened last week. Let's get as many points as we can just in case we go to sleep again. Big throw here. We've got a substitute already. Ashman is on for George Turner. George Turner came off in the 16th minute. They throw to the middle and win again. Scotland are dominating the lineouts. The rolling mall collapses. Does it collapse legally? Yes, it does, says the referee. Now they've got to get it out of here quick, Scotland. They've got the ball at the back. Schumann goes to ground. Five meters out now. Scotland trying to do it through the forwards. Pick and go. Two meters short. Sherman pick and go. And they, oh, this one spills out the back. Scotland secure the loose ball, though. They've lost a couple of meters. Now they've got a penalty advantage. France caught offside. Big moment here because Scotland either score or they make a mistake. Penalty advantage this close to the line. Russell with the change of direction. Well, there's the mistake and it will come back from the penalty. Oh, it's a tap and go. And he's over the line, but the referee's blown his whistle. He was not on the mark. Oh, Ben, ben White, that would have been a double. This time, Finn Russell points to posts from right in front. Probably a smart decision there. It would have been tempting to keep that momentum going, though. But this is an absolute gift three points right in front of the posts. Oh, France, what's going on? We, get, we have to go back to the World Cup as well, Dan Jam. France, I would have thought, if if not the favourites going into the competition, would have certainly been in the uh, conversation. They were definitely in the conversation. They were certainly in the conversation favourites to win the Six Nations, according to the bookmakers anyway. The bookmakers had them raging hot favourites. Me personally, I thought Ireland were going to win this year. And I'm pretty sure I said that. I think that's on the record before the first game of the Wasted World of Sports coverage of Six Nations. I think I said Ireland to win the tournament this year. But they do look like an absolute shell of the team they're capable of being, France. 10 points to three it is, though, in favour of Scotland. 22 minutes gone. They secure the kickoff and box kick up to halfway. Ramos brings it down for France. Bloody refs and their whistles, says James, as there's a chip and chase. Just needing the bounce. It's lost forward by Finn Russell. 
So France will get the scrum down. They will get a result. I've always got faith in the Irish, Dan Cham. It's the Irish blood. As slight as it may be, it's the Irish blood that runs through my veins. They would, uh, they would be my second team. All Blacks, Ireland, anybody else. Scrum down here for France. Run right in front of the posts. About, uh, probably about 25 meters out. Solid scrum from Scotland. They're driving. They're driving through France. Release the ball. And now Jalibert steps into space. Scotland slide across and cover it off. France send the phases back into midfield. Cut out pass across the face of the defense to Antonio. Keeping it on the right-hand side now. A little jig, a little goose step. And they've lost the ball. It spills out the back, but they scramble back and secure the loose ball. France still have it. Five phases gone. In from the side there, surely Scotland. But he went right over the top of everything and gets away with it. Big defense in midfield. France slipping on the surface there, the big man, Bale. They don't have a lot of numbers in attack here, France. Scotland, it seems like they've got about 30 jerseys out there. The defense is just so well numbered up. And the ball is lost forward at the back of the ruck. That is the defensive pressure. There was just nothing happening there for France. The Scottish defence holds firm, and this is the Scotland that we saw in the first half last week. They're once again putting on a performance. Very nice to see. Dan Jam says, I thought... Well, first of all, Dan Jam says it's so obvious that France are missing Dupont... They can't really operate without him. And then goes on to say, I thought France uh, is in being favourites for the Six Nations, but only on the basis of French home field advantage against Ireland, especially playing the game in Marseille. James says, yes, yeah, same. Uh, I'm not sure if that's prediction for the... I was a little late on scene when that one came through. Uh, New, so J, uh, uh, New Zealand, so New Zealand, Ireland, then Australia, Dan. In rugby union, James, Australia, I would, I would only go for Australia in very, very select circumstances in the rugby union. An extremely, Small set of circumstances. For example, there's a time that I can remember as the scrum goes down here, Scotland will have the feed. Uh, there, there was an example I can remember. I had $50 on Australia to defeat England on the Northern Hemisphere tour. It was probably about, uh, oh, it was the early 2000s anyway. It was when England were like really, really red hot team. And uh, I just had a feeling, I had a feeling the Wallabies were going to win that one. And so I chucked $50 on it, which was a lot of money for me at the time. So I was really cheering on the Wallabies that year. Well, that game. 
Line out throw here for France on halfway. It's scrappy. It spills out the back and Scotland dive on the loose ball. Oh, Scotland are dominating line out time. And Russell spots some space in behind. It's a perfect kick, turning the French around as the ball dribbles into touch. France under pressure on this line out throw. They just made a mess out of the last one. And now they've got to throw one in about 15 out from their own line. Pressure. What a kick from Finn Russell as well. Great vision there from the fly half, turning them around. Oh, this game's living up to expectations so far. I, I'm starting to get very concerned about my tip. I really, really am. France go to the front and it's sloppy again. They come away with it though. Movaka slips over. There's obviously a, a Jew on the patch or something. Something's going on. The French players are falling over their own feet. Scotland don't seem to be suffering that problem. And the clearing kick does not make a lot of, dis a lot of distance. And Scotland are going to have the line out throw. They'll be on the attack again here. They're just controlling the territory and the possession here. Scotland, they're disrupting the line out. They're putting the kicks up and putting pressure on the chase. And this one, uncontested at the front. Stark contrast to the French line out throws. And this one goes to nobody. The pass goes to nobody and France swoop on it, but they're all offside, says the referee. And this is another gift three points here. An absolute gift three for Scotland to extend their lead if they want it. Scotland, they've done that a couple of times. The pass to John Cena. Ah, yes. It goes down well at 12.49 a.m. And Finn Russell does point to post. Oh, it's raining. Okay. It is raining. So that's why it's a little bit slippery underfoot. I would say that maybe Scotland, this is just a really random theory now that I've noticed it's raining. But maybe, just maybe, Scotland being the home team, a little bit more familiar with the conditions, noted that the rain perhaps was incoming as Finn Russell plops this one over. Could have done it blindfolded from that position. 13 points to three. But may, yeah, perhaps the Scottish players more familiar with the conditions, how the ground will react to a little bit of rain. Maybe, just maybe, they've got uh, slightly longer studs in the boots. The French players maybe do not because it is only one team falling over their own feet at the moment. Interesting. France get in and counter ruck and they get the ball. I think they get the penalty advantage as well. Although it seems like the referee has said advantage over. That was a relatively quick advantage. But France have the ball. They have an opportunity here to strike straight back after points. They've got the ball in midfield. Now about 15 out. Decoy runners. Ramos sends it on. It's handed off. And now Scotland get in there and spoil. They might have turned this over. No, it comes back on the French side. And they've got numbers to burn out to the right. Can they release the ball? It's fired out. The cutout pass. And this will surely be a try in the corner. And it is... Fiku, he was denied earlier, but this time there can be no stopping him. They had to score there, France, and that might just settle them down a little bit. 13 points to eight with the kick to come from out wide. 
James says, uh, I thought, I thought frogs enjoyed the wet. Cheeky, cheeky bugger. Thirty-one and a half minutes gone. France have struck back. Not without their legs. Not without their extended studs. Although that looked a, a lot better. Ramos. To convert this one. From out wide, it's on target. Ramos, it's right down the middle. Oh, it was precision. What an amazing kick. 13 points to 10. We're back to three. We're hanging in there. How are my tips looking? Oh, yep. Yeah. A three to five point margin until the 60 minute mark. All right. Some of my tips are hanging in there. France have it at the back. Luchu puts the box kick up. And this time, loose ball from Scotland. It's gone backwards, though, and they do come away with it. Calling the troops in for a box kick of their own. This is where they've looked threatening. Pressure on the kick chase, and it's lost forward by France. This is where they're losing the game at the moment, the French. Scotland are just forcing those mistakes. And back we come for the scrum. That's where Scotland have just got their noses ahead. Line-out time. And these results putting pressure on the kick chases, the box kicks. About 90% of them have yielded a result. France are kicking for territory more often than not. And they're winning that battle. They are out kicking Scotland when they get into kicking duels. But the Scots, they changed it up and said, we'll just put pressure on the kick chase. Wherever we are on the field, we'll put pressure on the kick chase. And they are forcing mistakes. France are definitely feeling the pressure here. Approaching half time, one try apiece. And just a penalty goal, the difference. Tight game. Scrum down here, Scotland. What can they come up with? Solid scrum. Oh, there's definitely more tries in this game. As the wraparound, Russell does well to offload that out to Patterson. But that stumble meant there was no real threat on the defensive line. Scotland still have it though. Quick ruck ball out to the left, but there's plenty of troops there for France. Russell just dinks it in behind the line. And it's a terrible clearing kick. Scotland will have the line out throw where they've been very strong. And James says, are you going to do the Olympics this year, Dan? Please say yes. I suppose I could do some. struggle to see how I could do all of it, but what would I do? What events would I cover? What events would I be interested in? Scotland go to the middle of the line-out, uncontested again. They release it into midfield, and that's a good run there from Tui Pilotu. Cutting back, changing direction there. His Turner is back on the field. 
Scotland, they're inside the 20. That's a big drive through the forwards, drawing in defenders. Pressure on France here. In over the top of this one, France secure the turnover. Fantastic work. Although it looks like it might be coming back on Scotland's side. Oh, he did all the hard work. He did extremely well, but then he spills the ball forward and Scotland have it back. Penalty advantage now. They must score. Vandermeer gets involved. That's what we want to see. We want to see Vandermeer score a try. And we come back for the penalty. Oh, do they take the three or do they keep the pressure on with four minutes to go till the halftime break? Russell's just trying to calm things down. What do we do here? Big discussion going on. I would actually be very tempted to plug this into the corner. They've been so dominant at line-out time. Oh, don't tell me they're going to tap and go. They're not even going to do anything. They're just going to tap and go here, Scotland. Oh, this is a huge call. They have been so dominant at line-out time. Surely that was the option to plug into the corner and set up a rolling mall or some form of set play. Change of direction here. Russell, inside ball. That was very flat, if not slightly forward. They're focusing on this left-hand edge, but the French defense hold firm. They're just a meter short here, Scotland. A meter out. Oh, that's a penalty advantage there from the side and no arms at all. Absolutely no arms there from Antonio. Russell gets the pass out. It's intercepted. So we'll come back for the penalty and this will be a yellow. This has got to be a yellow card. If this is not a yellow card, it's going to be a very, very stern warning from the referee. And it is a yellow card for exactly what I called. No attempt to use the arms and he had to go. Antonio's off for 10. Tackled without the ball and no arms in the tack. He's just launched himself like a torpedo. A very, very large torpedo. Torpedo. He's a very big man. He doesn't quite agree with it, but there was absolutely no attempt at arms there. Boom. Oh, he's just missiled in. Oh, that actually looked a lot worse on the replay. He might be lucky to just get yellow there. Quite honestly. And that's on report. I'm not surprised at all. And Scotland, with the prop off the field, have called the scrum. Now, this is a decision I can get behind. Two and a half minutes till the halftime break. The props off the field force the replacement. They'll have an extra man out wide. Very smart decision there from Scotland. Now they have to make it count though. All right, so James has thrown some suggestions out there. It's, unfortunately, it's not the Winter Olympics, so we can't do any curling. But we've got the swimming, we've got the weightlifting, the rugby sevens, cycling. Hey, um, pole vault, high jump, the um, steeplechase. Gymnastics. Dan Jam very sarcastically says, the props off, who's going to be on the French wing? Ah! Oh, God. Alara, you just scared the... <laughs> hey, you scared me. Hey.
a very tiny dog, but she casts a very enormous shadow on the wall when she walks past the lights. Oh, that scared me. Oh, okay, my heart. Scotland, five meters out here. They've got the scrum run in front of the posts. This is a big drive from the Scots. It goes down. The referee doesn't care. He just says, use it. Russell puts it out the back. Oh, they got in each other's way there. Vandermeer's brought down, and this will be a penalty. They're all offside again. Oh, they might lose another one here if they're not careful, France. They may lose another one. Do your scrum down again. The scrum was a mess last time. Yes, they do call a scrum. Oh, it was a shambles last time. The referee did not care. This was the scrum. It looks like a ruck. Hands all over him as well there from Luchu. The French scrum half all over his opposite there. One minute to go till the halftime break. France are under the pump here. You get the feeling, though, Scotland, they probably... Uh, th this would be some sort of moral uh, moral victory, some sort of confidence boost for France if they can hold on here. Not leak any more points. That yellow card, by the way, it's it's on report and it's under review. I said at the time after I saw the replay, I'm very surprised, or, or it's very lucky to just be a yellow but maybe it won't be. And this is a big scrum from France. Massive scrum. And they have driven Scotland backwards and won the penalty for collapsing. And France will go into half time with no further damage done. Unless they do something just ridiculous right now in the last couple of minutes. Ed Vogel. Ahoy, mate. All right, here we go. Here's the chat. Okay, it's remained a yellow card. Oh, I think he's extremely lucky. Antonio is extremely lucky there, in my opinion, as Jalibert just taps and plugs this into touch. And France have held on. Oh, they were under immense pressure there, and that could be the defining point of this contest. 13 points to 10, and they've held on. A very, very important period. So how are we looking here, Wasted World of Sports, as we go into halftime here, 13 points to 10 in favour of Scotland. I said Scotland first points. I did say through a penalty goal, Scotland scored first points, but it was via a try. Uh, I said France would score the first try through Damien Pinot. It didn't happen. Their first try was from Gail Ficou. I've still tipped a three to five points margin until around the 60 minute mark. We've got to say that's looking good at the moment. And ultimately France to cover the line and win by 10. I'm starting to get just a little bit nervous about that prediction because France really, apart from a couple of very impressive set plays have looked completely headless. They've looked terrible. They've actually looked even worse than last week. I feel like they were hindered a little bit last week. A, by how well Ireland played. And B, they they suffered the double yellow card, which obviously automatically upgraded to a red. I, I still feel like once they got that red card, they held on a lot better than, than any of us sort of expected. So I feel like they've been worse. The, much worse this week and Scotland uh, they will be disappointed they didn't get some points right on the break there I dare say anyway because they had France completely under the pump but that was such a massive scrum right on the half time break as we have some stats here at half time 
Scotland, 65 carries to France, 49. They've been dominant with the ball in hand. Both teams, though, 310 metres made. Scotland have missed more tackles. France have been forced to make more. Seven penalties conceded by the French to three. That's unacceptable, really. Lineouts, 1-10. Scotland have been perfect at lineout time. And they've stolen one of the French throws as well. France winning three, losing one. 58% possession in favor of the Scots. And the action areas, it's been very dominant down the French side of the field. Ed Vogel says, oh, they're all single bets, James. Yes, um, because for whatever reason, all the bookmakers, sports bet, points bet, Neds, for whatever reason, just not accepting multis on the Six Nations. I don't understand why, but it's weird like that because during the Big Bash, Neds, I believe, was the only bookmaker that you could do a multi on for the, for the Big Bash. So there's weird little things like that. For whatever reason, none of the Australian bookies are accepting multis on the Six Nations. So yes, my bets down the bottom there are all singles. Uh, Ed Vogel says, I've seen the Six Nations series overall good doc. Oh, you're talking about that uh, documentary series. Yeah, okay. I haven't, I haven't seen that. This is also my very first ever Six Nations tournament live. The first three games were epics. We nearly saw history made with that Welsh near comeback. We nearly saw Italy get it together just long enough to pull off a big upset. We saw a cracking contest between Ireland and France. And this one is set up to be another absolute corker of a game. Half time here, wasted world of sports, 13 points to 10. Scotland have got their noses ahead. How will the second half play out? I can't wait. I can't wait. And then, of course, coming up later tonight, we've got, uh, we've got England versus Wales. All right, I'm going to have a very quick toilet break. Not that you needed to know that. I could have just said I'm having a quick break. It could have been for any reason. And I'll be back very, very shortly for all the second half action. Here, 13 points to 10 this game. We've got another uh, another good one in the making. It it does appear. All right. Wasted world of sports. Second half coming up. I've lost my mouse. Is what's happened. That's why I look so confused. I've lost my mouse. There it is. Okay, all right. We'll be right back for uh, for the second half. Half time here, thirteen points to ten. Scotland doing the job at the moment. Good for them. Quality, quality performance.
right. Hey, what do you reckon I should do some... I oh, know. <laughs> Poor J James is just going to be like, oh, God. Oh, yeah. A merchandise idea, huh? A merchandise idea. Just like those keychains, Dan. Just like those keychains. But I just thought, as I've got the, uh, the Brew and Crowley show, James would obviously remember Crowley from the State of Origin. The State of Origin streams. Michelle's best mate, Crowley. I just thought we should get some wasted world of sports stubby coolers to add to the merchandise repertoire. But yeah, maybe I should go ahead and get those keychains done like I've been talking about for the past year and a half. Could be a thing to do as well. Okay. I think we're back on. I'm still not sure how those ads work on YouTube. They don't play for people who are on premium, obviously. I mean, they wouldn't because premium people don't have adverts. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Half time here, 13 points to 10. We've got another great game on our hands. The Six Nations this year. I mean, is it always this way? Dan Jam, Ed Vogel... I don't know, James, have you ever watched the Six Nations before? I'm so curious to know. Is it always this intense? What Have I been missing out all these years? My first ever live Six Nations. Always. See, what it reminds me of, Dan Jam, and people may remember this, but the early days of the Tri-Nations... I'm going back to Jonah Lomu, Jonah Lomu Rugby on the PlayStation when the Tri-Nations was a single round robin. Now, in the Rugby Championship, they play each other 72 times in round robin format, it feels like. By the way, uh, anyone new to the channel, I'm prone to exaggeration every now and then. I'm prone to just slight exaggerations. But when the Tri-Nations first started, it was just one. You played each other once. In order to win that competition, you had to be on every single game because there weren't that many. That's the feeling I get from the Six Nations as well. It's it's because it's single round robin, isn't it? There's no we play... We play you here, we play you there. We get a rematch. We, we can afford to rest some players. No, you've got to have you, you've got to have your best team out on the park. You've got to bring your A game week in, week out because you lose one, you're in trouble. And that's what makes it so intense. That's what I like about it. And that's what I used to love about the original incarnation of the Tri-Nation series. Back in the day, if you dropped one game, you were in trouble. You had to hope that the team that beat you lost. Then for and against would come into play. All that sort of thing. James, uh, James says you, you used to watch only Irish games when it came to Six Nations. Yeah, fair enough. I've always loved... Ireland. Ireland has been my Northern Hemisphere team of choice. Now, obviously, that's the, the, the part blood. But despite that, I've just, yeah, I've always sort of taken a liking to, to the Irish rugby team. Yeah, they've kind of, for, for a very long time, they've kind of been my second team. Of course, I did lose... A little bit of love for the Irish rugby team when they started defeating the All Blacks a little bit more regularly, but <laughs> that's to be expected. Dan Jam says, I think it helps they play once, one one year home, one year away. Yeah, exactly like the Tri-Nations used to be. Home field advantage is so important. I might have to crack it. I think it's time. I think it's overdue, maybe. It might be time for another little play of Jonah Lomu rugby. What a great game. 
fantastic rugby game. I mean, if there's a better rugby game that's ever existed, because when you think about it, it's a hard sport to really capture in a video game. There's so many little intricacies. No disrespect to rugby league, because we know waste of water sports, we love the rugby league as well. We cover the rugby league primarily. So absolutely no disrespect before any leagueies jump down my throat. But it's a much simpler game. Much easier to translate a game of rugby league to video game format. <laughs> Just my opinion, excuse me too, by the way, because that burp probably came through. <sighs> James says, I can just see it, Dan Bobbleheads as merch. Dan, dancing three teams, Sharks, Panthers. Who's the third team? New South Wales, ah. Uh, Michelle just comes in Broncos. Broncos in Queensland. Oh, she would love that. And, and Michelle's Queensland Bobblehead can have number six and Munster on the back. Michelle Munster. Oh. All right, we've got to do this. We've got to make this happen. Even if it's just one prototype and it's Michelle Queensland jersey, number six, monster on the back of the jersey. Ah, Michelle, the co-host everyone loves to rib. Oh God, they're out for the second half. And we are ready to get back into this. Oh, 13 points to 10. France will kick us off. Scotland, first use of the ball in the second half. All right, bring it on. Let's do it. Oh, the princess is up. She's just letting some... <laughs> she's just letting some peasants past off to the, off to the bar. Scotland secure <laughs> Scotland secure the ball from the kickoff. The box kick has been very effective for them through the first half. This one's a little bit too long, and there's no pressure at the back on Ramos, who eyes up his options, and he stays on the short side. He stays a little upright as well, Ramos. Uh, there could be, Dan Jam. There very well could be. You never know. We get around. Somehow we can afford it. I'm not entirely sure how. Especially, anyway, not a conversation for another time, I suppose. That's off the hands there. And it falls on the French side. They still have six minutes with a man in the bin, France. Oh, Scotland have turned this over. Great work at the ruck. And the more they can have their hands on the ball in possession with the man in the bin, the better it will be for them as Finn Russell. They've let it bounce again at the back here, France. France are not attacking the ball. They're letting it bounce. And that is always a dangerous, dangerous prospect. Because that rugby ball, as we know, I don't need to tell any of you, the bouncing rugby ball is a very unpredictable thing. So five and a half minutes for Antonio still in the sin bin. Very lucky for that to have stayed a yellow, in my opinion. I'm not sure what anybody else thinks. Chat room. I feel like extremely lucky for that to have remained a yellow. I mean, it was a pretty blatant human missile, and what a big human missile Antonio is. Box kicks, puts pressure on Ramos at the back. Vandermeer, oh, he German suplexes him into touch, and Scotland try to go quickly. But this will be a French throw into the line out. Was good defense at the back from Vandermeer. Got... 
Movaka with the throw. France have been scrappy at line-out time. Scotland get up and put pressure on again and win the ball. France have just fallen to pieces at line-out time. It's incredible. You thought for sure with so much on the line that France would come to the party, but Scotland... So, so dominant line out time. Russell puts the kick, looking for his winger. Oh, but Ramos gets a boot to it and saves the day. The pressure is still on though. Patterson comes back for Scotland. And now a simple error. The wet conditions. And there is one Scottish player who didn't have the long studs in. Who was that? That was uh, Scott Cummings. Dan Jam says, considering the strength of the Scottish line-out, you've got a question why they still look for territory. J. Joe says, do you think they'll be the people's elbow soon? Well, we've already seen a human missile. We've seen a German suplex. So who knows? Maybe a clothesline first. Maybe we'll see a clothesline before the people's elbow. Two and a half minutes left with the man in the bin. They've not suffered any damage. Human missile would be, I reckon, um, I reckon would be the ultimate warrior's uh, flying shoulder block. That's, uh, <laughs> except the ultimate warrior got a, li a little more height than uh, poor old a Antonio, the big unit. As France secure the ball here from the scrum. Not making a lot of distance, though. They do set up the ruck for a box kick here. Luchu. And again, kicking long. No pressure at the back. And it's taken. Beating the first defender. Beating the second defender. Beats a third. Oh, it's a great return from Kyle Rowe. Now, Russell, there's space out to the left. Go through the hands, mate. Oh, it's a terrible pass, though. That pass... They're, oh, they've made chicken salad out of it, though. And up over halfway goes Jones. Back to Russell to put it high. And this one's a little too deep from Finn Russell. Juggled at the back by Ramos. Oh, jeez, he was threatening to lose it. But he claims the mark. And Russell just got that one a little wrong. But still, it's kept them down here, kept them down this end of the field. Ramos clears it. Oh! <laughs> ah! Russell's fallen over the Guinness sign. Oh, <laughs> oh somebody timestamped that. Finn Russell's gone down on his bum bum over the Guinness sign. That is fantastic. We've got to add a stream marker to that one. I've done that more than a few times, Dan Jam. Don't you worry. And Finn Russell, don't you worry either. I have had entire tree stumps fall on me. Well, not tree stumps. Tree branches fall on me wandering back from the pub. Decided to have a cheeky little swing. But I forget that I'm a big guy. Down came the entire branch. Uh, but anyway, time is up on the, the clock for the yellow card. France will be back to a full complement. Luke uh, Luchu puts the kick up, the box kick. It's a mess. They still have it though, France. Through the hands they go, but. Not a lot of shape in that back line. That's a nice kick, though. 
puts pressure on Patterson. Patterson. Oh, what a return kick. And this has been lost forward. Oh, Jalen Bear, what was he thinking? Jelly Bear, what were you doing, mate? In one of the most crazy things I've ever seen, Jelly Bear has knocked the ball forward. I can't even imagine what he was even trying to do there. What was he even attempting? Oh, I've seen it all now. <sighs> ah, James has just shared an interview with The Undertaker with his thoughts on the whole Rock, Cody, and Reigns saga. Ah, is that from uh, his most recent podcast? Oh, yes, I'm still yet to check that out. That will be very interesting. Jalabert has just had a brain explosion of all brain explosions. France are back to a full complement, but they have just gifted Scotland territory here. That is an absolute present. Gift wrapped and delivered with both hands. This now becomes a massive scrum. The crowd is in chorus. It's brought the crowd into it as well. Scotland could go on the attack here. The ball's released. And Tua Pilotu spills it forward. Oh, it's been, it's been cleared. It's play on. Looking for a double is white. France get there first. The ball spilt forward. I thought for sure it was a knock on by Scotland. This is going to be a five meter scrum to Scotland. We need to look back at the original knock on, I think. I mean, surely that was a spilt ball by the Scots. This is going to be a five meter scrum to Scotland. The pressure is back on France. I want to see that. This is what I want to see here. This ruck. How did this ball spill forward? It's been lost forward by Scotland, surely. Oh, I, th I think they've got away with that one. Let's have a look. Hey, he's knocked that on, surely. Anyway. Anyway, the call has been made, and it is a five-meter scrum. Scotland will be on the attack. And I feel like the decision's just been turned around. Yes, it has. That decision's been turned around. It's going to be a goal line dropout and not a five-meter scrum. What a mess. The official's making a complete mess out of that one. <laughs> There was a lot to look at there. In fairness, there was a lot to look at there. But France, they'll be a lot happier with the dropout than defending a scrum five meters out. Jalabert up to halfway here with the dropout. Oh, head down, bum up. Here goes Dempsey. He only knows one way. Inside pass, and now space has been created for Scotland. Christy nearly goes through. And France secure the turnover. Who's that in there? It's Aldrit. Over the ball. He's hurt himself in the process, but he's done his job. Great work there from France. Keeping this one close, keeping us all interested. Thirteen points to ten. Fifty minutes gone. Oh, 
Well, we've got an injury stoppage here. Old mate hurt himself there when he went down uh, trying to secure that. To well, he did successfully secure that turnover ball. All right, let's recap my pre-game predictions. Okay, Scotland first points. Give me half a point for that, yeah? Let's be generous and give me half a point for that. I said Scotland first points via a penalty. Scotland got first points. It was via a try. I get no points for that one. France first try, Damien Pinot. Three to five point margin until the 60th minute mark. We're still on for that one. France to cover the line and win by 10. I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> I could not begrudge Scotland for getting the win, though. Scotland have come to play. And th this is about the period of time that they completely deteriorated against the Welsh last week, isn't it? So this is the big moments now for Scotland. They hold the lead. They are playing well enough that they should be further ahead. Can they hold on? This is where it all fell apart for them last week. Surely they won't make that same mistake. It'll be a lot closer. Oh, no, this is not good. He's just won the turnover ball for his team, Aldrit. And it looks like he's going off on a stretcher. Jeez, when you've just done all that great work. Lucha's come off as well. That's a big change there from, from France. Jeez, a stretcher job here for Aldrit. That's not good. You don't like to see that. Even my most bitter enemy, I would not want to see leave the field on a stretcher, except for Reese Walsh in the rugby league. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Okay, yeah, he's done his knee or something there in his attempt, successful attempt, to secure that turnover. Aldrit has just completely, completely done his knee in, it looks like. A knee or an ankle, it looks like a knee. <clears throat> Standing ovation from the crowd. Aldrit is off. It is a penalty, though, for France. He's done his job in that respect, but... Oh. Okay. Sorry, I just held back a sneeze. Jalibert with the touch finder. We're back into it. Aldrich's off the field. Stretch it off. We're back into this contest. Jalibert puts it into touch on the halfway line. France with the throw. They go quickly to the middle. Scotland challenge, but France come down with it. Rolly Mall is set. They've got it at the back. It collapses. France, they release it. Up over halfway they go. Keeping the ball in hand close to the ruck. Just trying to get some momentum happening here, France. I can't remember the last time they strung some faces together and just had their hands on the ball. 
And it seems like that's just what they're doing at the moment. Just trying to play themselves back into this one. Five phases. Nothing really adventurous happening. Staying on that left-hand side. Quick ruck ball here. Now a little bit of space. The kick in behind the line. Scotland retreat. Oh, what great work at the back by Patterson. Amazing work. And they've got the ball back here. Scotland get numbers behind it. What an amazing pickup from Patterson. Russell's in at scrum half. The box kick clearance. It's only as far as the 20. That was such great work. Patterson, I tell you what, if I were playing the Six Nations Fantasy, I'd be very happy with a Patterson in my team. Boring second half so far, says James. Well, there's been a lot of stoppages this second half, hasn't there? This first 10 minutes. I think there's been more stoppages this first 10 minutes of the second half than the entirety of the first half. Now, obviously, that uh, a big part of that comes down to that unfortunate injury to... Oh, there's a knock-on in midfield. Denty. And France. What is going on with them from the World Cup to last week? And it's carried on this week. The self-capitulation of the French team. There is just something not quite right there. It can't all be DuPont, seriously. You would, you would have to think, surely. Surely it can't all be one player. And they are fired up in the coach's box. And I don't mean fired up in a good way. Good way. They are fired up angry in the French coaching box. Just a simple error. There was no pressure on. None at all. Very simple mistake. Dropped ball out the back. Scotland have the scrum down. Free kick to Scotland. They go quickly. They find space. France, let it bounce again. Ramos now spots some space. And they've lost the ball forward. Oh, it's another mistake from France. Too many errors. Scotland are so fired up now. They've got all the momentum. They've now got the territory. Scotland are right on top here, but they still only lead by three points. They're going to need more than that. They are so, so angry in the French coaching box. I've never seen anything quite like it. You would think... I just find it so hard to believe what could be going wrong with the French rugby team at the moment. What could it be? Because you wouldn't think they needed any more motivation. <clears throat> and they just can't seem to put it together. <coughs> Excuse me. They just cannot seem to put anything together for any length of time. And if Scotland can get a try here, if they can bag a try and just put themselves 10 points clear. It will well and truly be panic stations. <clears throat> 55 minutes gone, scrum down here for Scotland. Great field position. It's solid. It's a big drive from France. It collapses. The referee says bugger it. No, he doesn't. The referee says penalty advantage Scotland. 
Russell sends it out. Now Patterson. Patterson's looked threatening all night. He can't get the ball free. But Scotland under penalty advantage. Still advantage. A new advantage, maybe. Russell to the line. Flat pass. Jones is tackled. They're up quickly again here, France. Still under penalty advantage. There might be a new one here. The referee's having a chat with the TMO about something. And here we go. Right out in front of the posts. An absolute gift three-pointer if they want it. I would take it. God damn it, I would take it. 16 points to 10. It could be. This is a gift right out in front. Oh, <laughs> they haven't even made the call, but the trainers, the water boys out there, the water boy was out there with the kicking tee before, I'm sure, before a decision had even been officially made. He was out there with the kicking tee. That has clearly come from the coach's box. Get out there. Get out there, mate, before he does something stupid like put it into the corner. Take that kicking tee out to him. This is an absolute gift. Three points right in front. Finn Russell. To put the Scots out by six. Sixteen points to ten it is. Scotland have the lead. Fifty-seven and a half minutes gone. <sighs> Honestly, watching this game, you have to question how France are still in touching distance as they get us back underway. Scotland have it. Yeah, just so it's... <sighs> France have just not been in the contest, it feels like, physically. Or mo with the, any momentum at all. Ramos now returns the kick, puts it high, chases his own kick. Russell takes it to the back for Scotland. They've been winning those little moments. White's got it to the back for Scotland. Uh, Dan Jam says, I think it's the Scotland are lacking the killer instinct to finish a game off. They should be so much further ahead. I think, in all honesty, they should be so much further ahead. The way this game's gone as France have it now. Up towards halfway. Oh, quick ruck ball. They've got numbers here on the left. Can't release it. They stay on the blind side. Going to ground just inside Scotland territory. France keeping it close to the ruck. Just one out stuff, not really offering up anything. Box kick coming up here. Going for the box kick. Perfectly placed, but Finn Russell has done exceptionally well in traffic to come down with that. But France counter ruck. France drive. Scotland get in there and secure the ball. Great work. Scotland have done extremely well to see off that threat. That was a big moment there. You feel like France decided this was it. This was the point. They're going to throw everything at them. And Scotland have held them off. Ramos has it on halfway. Scotland told to release. Starting to get some consistent ball here now, France. What can they come up with? It's back to Jalibert, puts it high. Scotland have been safe under the high ball and, oh, Patterson, was he taken early? It was perfectly timed. Perfectly timed tackle, but so secure under the high ball there. Patterson, what a player.
he's actually in this Six Nations tournament becoming uh, definitely one of my favorite players of the tournament. Patterson, he's been so solid last week, this week as well. Quality player there at the back. Scotland now, box kick of their own, up over halfway, turning the French around. Firing the ball across into midfield, setting up another phase. France with it, inside their own territory though. Scotland have been just holding off every attacking raid. Oh, he's up and he's attacking the ball, told to lay off now. Scotland, that was a near thing. But Scotland, their defense holds firm. Nothing doing here. France forced to kick again. Box kick. No pressure at the back. Russell can return it. Russell returns it with interest. Over the top of the heads, it bounces and it bounces a little too far. It just rolls into the end goal. What a kick though from Finn Russell. Well, here we are, 60 minutes gone. I hark back to my pre-game predictions. It was going to be close till 60 minutes. I don't think it's going to finish the way that I predicted it to. With France finishing over the top, it will take an almighty effort from France here to suddenly click into gear and make something happen. Goal line dropout. It's a big one. It's up over halfway. Russell's got it. Oh, drop goal from Finn Russell from just inside the halfway line. It is way off target. Way off target there. It wouldn't have gone over if there were seven goal posts in a row. Little bit of a nothing play there. Perfectly timed run. Puts pressure on Scotland at the back. But again, a 10 out of 10 effort from them. Secure with the ball in hand. Holding off any potential threat. Box kick. Perfectly placed. Pressure at the back. It's knocked backwards. And now some space for France. The pass was a little bit too early though. And they're forced to kick in behind the line. And that's great work from Russell at the back, who dummies and gets a kick away, pushing France back into their own territory. France kicked back down. Rose got it for Scotland. It's another good kick. Four some backs. Four some backs in shoes. Oh, and here's Patterson. Puts it high, chases his own kick. France, return kick, taken on the full. Russell at the back, did he mark it? Russell from inside the 20, finds touch. It's a great touch finder. France, go quickly. Pressure on at the back here, but Ramos does well. Or was it Pinot? It was Damien Pinot. Giving credit to Ramos, and it was, wasn't was even him. France have it. Not really offering anything on attack, though, France. Okay. Setting up the box kick. They've been forced back into that box kick. And again, it's a little too deep. No pressure. No pressure on Scotland at the back. Now Patterson fires a loose pass. It might have been slightly forward as well. And France will secure the loose ball. And that's probably Patterson's first mistake. Scotland have come away with it though. France just <laughs> can't get anything to go their way here, France. And there is a penalty advantage being played. Oh, when it's not your night, it's not your night. And it hasn't been their fortnight. France. I don't understand that decision, though. 
Western World of Sports, 16 points to 10 here. Scotland, 65 and a half gone. I'll be right back. All right, Scotland have it. The line out throw from the penalty. About 10 meters inside French territory. They secure it in the middle. Russell with the kick over the top. It's a little bit too deep. No, it's perfectly placed. And it's a mistake from Pinot. It's called backwards. It's been called a knockback. Oh, the referee's lost his ever loving mind. Scotland have it though inside their own 20 and White with a great clearing kick. France return it just looking for a mistake here with 13 minutes to go. France really need to start offering something on attack. Russell puts the kick up. France to return it again. Both teams just looking for a mistake. The crowd boos. The crowd boos as this kicking standoff. France decide to run. And they've lost the ball forward. And Scotland have it. It's called an accidental offside against Scotland. Oh, the referee has lost all control of this game, by the way. An accidental offside. Finn Russell has kicked the ball square into the sternum of Schumann. And it's going to be a scrum down to France. 12 minutes to go. This is their opportunity. So yeah, there's a little bit of a, a a little bit of a black hole there in the rules, it seems, as far as the kicking goes. They've been getting into these kicking duels. So what's been happening is somebody will kick the ball for either team and then not chase. And because they don't chase, everybody in front of them from their defensive team is offside. So the player receiving the ball just stands there with all the time in the world. You, you get a stalemate situation. And just a little bit of a black hole in the rules there that the teams are exploiting. Scrum down. This is the opportunity now for France. Can they get the act together for just 10 minutes? Breaking off the back of the scrum. It's a solid one. And France now, for the first time tonight, some real front football. The kick in over the top. The chase. And it's a try. And it's a double. No, it's not. It's a... I thought it was a, a double. I do apologize. I thought it was a double for Fico. But this is Biel Berry. The chip and chase. All they have to do is get it together for 10 minutes. And what a start. They were presented the opportunity. Finn Russell kicking the ball into his own player. There's five on one here. Five on one. He's put the kick in over the top. Wins the race to the ball. France are about to lead this game. Can you believe it? France have a conversion to take the lead. Scotland. Oh, Scotland. They so nearly threw it away last week. 
you cannot believe that they could be staring down a one point deficit in this one. You just wouldn't believe it. Thomas Ramos, two from two tonight. What a massive kick this is in the context of the game. France could be in the lead for the first time tonight. He moves in, strikes it. It's right down the middle. France, I cannot believe what I'm about to say. France lead. 17 points to 16. France have the lead in this contest. You just can't believe it. As Russell gets us back underway, there's nine minutes to go. Nine minutes left. France, lead. What have we just witnessed? Scotland have thrown it away here. <clears throat> France secure it at the back of the ruck. Clear the ball up towards halfway. Eight minutes to go. One point the difference. Oh, we've... Whatever happens from here on in, we have had another absolute cracking contest here in the Six Nations. The second half has been a little bit slow. This has not been the most intriguing. Well, I wouldn't say, I shouldn't say it hasn't been intriguing. It's not been the most exciting style of rugby for the last 20, 25 minutes. The throw now into the line out has gone haywire. It's starting to fall apart now for the Scots. The line out has been so secure all night, but 72 minutes into the game, they lose one. And France launched the kick upfield. Patterson dummies the kick. Skews off an extra few meters. France let the ball bounce again. It's a clear tactic from the French. They're letting the ball bounce. And now kicking Jewel once again. Russell returns it to the line. France have it now. Jalabert kicks back. Russell takes it inside the 22. Russell puts it into touch. Up over halfway, just a couple of meters over halfway. France will have the throw to the line out though. Absolutely incredible. I cannot believe France are leading this game. I mean, I know that I predicted it. I predicted it to be close for 60 minutes and then France to to eventually get the win, but now France spill the ball at the front of the line out. Scotland, no, it comes back for a penalty. There was a hand on an arm there, pulling the arm. That's caused the mistake and that is massive. Oh, Scotland have just fallen apart here. Scotland have shot themselves in the foot. The game is here for the taking now for France. As Dan Jam in the chat room said a little earlier, just, uh, just Scotland lacking the killer instinct, not able to put the game to bed. A penalty on halfway. And France put it into touch. Not a lot of distance, but you get the feeling. He just wanted to make sure of that. There would be nothing more embarrassing than missing touch in this situation, this game situation. Marchand with the throw into the line out. And France have it. Suddenly, their line out is coming together as they set the rolling mall in motion. They're up over the 22. They've still got shape here. France still have it. Rolling Mall goes forward. Collapses now. Penalty advantage for France. They're going to extend their lead. 
They play down the left-hand edge of the field. Kick in behind the line is too deep. But we will come back for the penalty advantage and three points surely now for France. They will surely take the three here. It will be absolute lunacy if they don't. James says Scotland has a thistle in their feet. Of course they're going to take the three here. Scotland had this game for the taking. Four, we're inside the last four. Four minutes to go. Oh, there's people leaving. There is actually people in the upper tiers leaving the ground. He hasn't even had the kick a goal yet. I dare say he's not going to miss. Miss, he does not. And France extend the lead. 20 points to 16. Three minutes to go. Somehow they've pulled this one out. Scotland will now require a try. Scotland need a try. They go short with the kickoff. They tap it back. Scotland have the ball. Russell steps the first tackle. Tua Pelotu out wide. Scotland have it. They keep the ball alive in midfield. France, they just have to defend. They can give away penalty advantages. I mean, they won't want to, of course, but they can because a penalty goal is no threat. It's big defense in midfield here from the French, though. Scotland have lost yardage. They're back in their own territory. It's gone backwards. It's scrappy, but they still have the ball. Still inside their own territory. Lurking around the halfway line here, Scotland. Two minutes left. Russell's got it. Out the back it goes. Jones. They're up over halfway. Six phases gone. Back to Russell. The pass. Look at the defense here from France, though. Although, it's, it's opened up. And now Rowe puts the head down. Goes for the corner. He's made a fool of Ramos, but loses it forward. Hands on heads from Scotland. Oh, it's been that close. Something out of nothing there from Kyle Rowe. You, you thought for sure he had just won the game for Scotland. He made a fool out of Ramos at the back, but then he spills the ball in the tackle. This now becomes a massive scrum. This is a huge scrum down for France. Look for Scotland to drive. Driving for their lives here. Driving for their tournament. And the referee's already having words with the Scottish captain saying, I know, I understand what's on the line here. I understand you're going to want to drive for all your life, but just keep it legal. Time it correctly. The six, Dan Jam, James, everyone. JJ, the Six Nations has delivered again. What have I been missing all these years? This is my first time watching live the Six Nations. I have been missing out on this all these years. What a massive, massive scrum. They're about 15 meters out from their own line here, France. Scotland will drive with all their lives.
Big scrum, big drive by Scotland, just as we predicted. But France released the ball. A minute to go. Scotland burrow in, straight in from the side. Here goes Finn Russell. He's got the ball back, though. Scotland have it. Oh, there's a twist in this one left. Scotland have the ball five metres out. Cobus to Toy Bossman. Ahoy there, mate. What a finish we're in store for here. 30 seconds left. Scotland have it. Five out. A try will win it. A try will win it. Two metres out now. 30 seconds on the clock. Russell organising the troops. Crash ball, one out from the ruck. You get the feeling it might take a little bit more than that, though. Pick and drive. This is risky stuff. They're just looking for some sort of advantage. Six phases. They're so close here, Scotland. Millimeters. They're over. Scotland are over the line. It's been held up. It's short. They've driven them back. Time is up on the clock. Scotland still have it. They're over the line this time. Is it a try? The referee has got a huge decision to make here. Massive decision to make here from the referee. France feel like they've held them up. The referee is called held up, but we are going to the TMO in such a huge moment. Obviously, we're going to have a closer look. On-field decision, no try held up. What an absolutely incredible finish. No matter which way this game goes, what an amazing finish to this one. So there we go. Scotland have gone to ground. It's off the ground. It's off the ground. It is still off the ground. It's down there. That's down. That's a try. Is it going to be called, though? That looks like it's on the ground to me. It's on a boot. There, it's on the ground. It's a try. That ball is surely on the ground. But the only thing that will... The only thing that can stop Scotland here... The on-field decision is no try held up. We cannot physically see the ball there. We cannot physically see the ball on the ground. This is such a big call. It's on the boot there. It's on the boot there. We can't see it go to ground. We can't see it go to ground. This cannot be given. You would have to assume it's gone to ground right there in that moment but assumption is not good enough assumption is not good enough here we have not seen it i don't think this can be awarded he's surely got the ball down though he has surely got the ball down but we're just working off assumption here and assumption i'm afraid is not in the rule book Assumption is not in the rule book. Ollie is the best. Ahoy there, mate. Oh, what an intense finish we've had here. If this is a try, it's a real home crowd decision, but I will not, I will absolutely not begrudge it at all. Although that frame there, that frame, that frame there has the ball on the ground there, right there. The ball is on the ground and this is a try. And then it's to a try. Oh, this is an amazing finish. This is an absolute incredible finish. There is that one single frame. A single frame has shown the ball on the ground. This is going to be an amazing moment when this is awarded. 
This is going to be awarded a try, and Scotland have won it at the death. It's not been made official just yet. Oh. In oh, it's inconclusive. Oh, the, home the Scots are going to be furious here. The Scots are going to be furious. France have won. France have won. Booze ring out across the stadium. Finn Russell is shaking his head. He can't believe it. For mine, there was one frame there. A single frame showed the ball on the ground. France have won somehow. France were the better team for about five minutes of this 80 minute contest. Scotland just weren't able to take their opportunities. There is a hush around the stadium. Oh. See, the problem is, the problem is, assumptions are not in the rule book. It went up as no try. The original decision from the on field referee was that it was held up. Assumptions are not in the rule book. There was, apparently, there was no way that the TMO could conclusively say we saw the ball grounded in the in-goal area. We saw one frame, a single frame in the replay from uh, the, 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 the rear view, from behind the ruck, we saw a single frame of the ball on the ground. There is no way to say conclusively there was control there was no way to say conclusively it was over the line it was it was all that close it's safe to say from the replay we saw it looked like the ball got down we can assume that the ball got down over the in goal line but assumptions as i said not part of the rules france have held on to win dan jam says perfect result keeps france in it and gives scotland something to moan about for years and boy will they moan lisa ahoy there from san francisco welcome along what an absolute humdinger of a finish France have held on to win here, and boy, only just held on. Well, let's see how I went with my tips. Scotland, first points via a penalty. Okay, Scotland got first points by a try. I'm giving myself half a mark for that. France, their first try by Damien Pinot. No, I didn't get that right. No points for me on that one. France got their first try via uh, uh, Gail Fiku. Three to five point margin until the 60 minute mark. Well, I was pretty much spot on with that, wasn't I? France to cover the line, minus three and a half. Yes, I just got that. I just got France covering the line and uh, I failed slightly. France winning by 10. But I'm going to say, considering I put five bold predictions out there before the game even started, the fact that I covered off partially. What do you mean one out of five, James? What do you mean one out of five? I'm getting half a point. I'm giving myself half a point for, uh, for Scotland's first points. I said Scotland first points. And that means first points in the match, which they did. I get half a point for that. You're just being purposely difficult now, my friend. Purposely being difficult. So I get half a point for that one. I get a point for the three to five point margin until the 60 minute mark. And I get France covering the line. So I get two and a half out of five. Thank you very much. 
It's all right, Lisa. James, James just likes to be difficult. And since Bobsy and Heel Fries aren't around yet in 2024, he's being triple difficult because he's making up for the absence of those guys because they like to be difficult little buggers as well. Are these Dan's rules? Well, it is my wasted world of sports. So, yes, I do make the rules around here. <laughs> oh, yes. Either way, what an absolute cracking contest. Every game of the Six Nations so far has lived up to expectation. Uh, Lisa asks if I'll be covering more Six Nations games. Absolutely. Jeez, the way that it's gone so far, I don't want to miss a single minute of the action. I'm now even potentially on board for the Ireland-Italy game because who knows what that's going to throw up. And we'll definitely be back. Oh, jeez, I may as well... Oh. I'm thinking I might as well not go anywhere because the next game's starting very, very soon. But I've already got the other stream set up for uh, Wales versus England. So we've got Wales versus England coming up pretty much right after this in about 10 minutes. Well, I suppose I've got some things to set up for that. I've got to set up some predictions for that one. Some red hot tips for that game. Since I got uh, two and a half out of five for this one. <sighs> no, it's not a one out of five, James. It was three to five points margin until the 60 minute mark. So by, even by your metric, it's, it's better than one out of five. I got the three to five points margin until the 60 minute mark. And then I got France covering the line minus three and a half. So I either get two and a half out of five or I get two out of five. There is no metric possible that I only get one. You are just trying to be difficult. So, two and a half out of five. Not bad. Wales versus England coming up next. What are we thinking, Dan Jam? I'd be... After the first half last week, Wales versus Scotland, you'd have to be feeling pretty confident for England to win. But then after the second half, you'd have to think it's going to be very close. Oh, fair enough, James, fair enough. No, it was a three to five point margin to either team. <laughs> All right, waste of world of sports. We've had an absolute cracker once again here. The Six Nations has well and truly delivered. My first ever Six Nations tournament live. The first time that I've ever ever seen it live and in person i've always seen highlights of the main games but i've never actually tuned into one live before and i'm so so pleased so pleased that i have And I look forward to seeing what the next game brings. The next game coming up really, really soon. 
I actually need to get ready for it. So I'm pretty sure what's going to happen, and it's not my fault if it doesn't do this, it's YouTube's fault, but I'm pretty sure what's going to happen is I end this stream, and if you're still in the chat room, I'm pretty sure it's going to, it's supposed to anyway, automatically take you over to the uh, to the new stream, which will be England versus Wales, which will be starting very, very soon as the Wasted World of Sports coverage of the Six Nations continues right after this. Thank you so much for joining me for this one. I appreciate your company as always. France have somehow pulled a five-minute period out of their collective anus and stolen a win here. What will the next game bring? Wales, England coming up very, very shortly here on the Wasted World of Sports. Hope to see you over there. I'm going to end this one now, and then I'll go and start the next one. England, Wales, Six Nations continuing right after this. Cheers.